All right, next up, we have a short talk uh, by Craig uh, Rodriguez. Um, he's a software engineer who currently works as a QA automation engineer at an analytics startup. Originally from Toronto, uh, Craig lived in Boston for many years before settling in the Bay Area uh, 10 years ago. He's an avid open source contributor and has contributed to such projects as Twisted, BuildBot, and FreeBSD. Um, Craig is passionate about using automation, especially with Python, to improve efficiency and build better software. So with that, I will turn it over to Craig. Um, and we'll, we'll, we will take questions at the end of the short talk. Uh, hi. Uh, so the previous talk was actually very relevant to uh, what I'm going to talk about because uh, I uh, did a lot of open source work and uh, contributed and I, I extended a lot of my knowledge. Uh, so I'm going to talk about migrating python.org to buildbot9 and python3. And so uh, buildbot is build automation software written in python and it's used to build and test a software project. Um, so python.org uses buildbot to build uh, cpython which is the uh, when you run a python program when you type python the actual python binary itself um, is called CPython. And so the Python project uh, uses BuildBot to build uh, Python itself and test it when people make changes to it. And so what I'll talk about today is uh, my efforts to uh, upgrade the BuildBot used by python.org to version 9 and also to update the BuildBot software itself uh, to Python 3. So there's a lot of uh, things that went on with this migration. So I'll talk about BuildBot first. And so uh, BuildBot is a build automation software. It's written in Python. And the project is uh, pretty old, or uh, by Python standards maybe. Uh, it's over 12 years old. And you can go to buildbot.net to find out more about it in terms of the documentation. It's open source, so you can uh, pip install it. And you can try it out yourself. And it's used by uh, many projects, uh, including Chromium, LLVM, XEMAX, and, uh, and, and the Python project, which I'll talk about uh, today. It's also used in uh, diff uh, different companies. And so what does BuildBot do? So as you have a big uh, software project, uh, you make changes to the software project, and then you contribute the um, uh, changes back to a revision control system like Git. And uh, so uh, many of you are familiar with GitHub and pull requests. And so as you're contributing changes back to the project, uh, there's two basic questions that you want to answer. As I make a change to the, pro to the project, does my change uh, still build? And maybe that's not such a, a big deal for Python. Uh, but actually, there are uh, aspects to Python where you can build, but if you're dealing with things like Java or C, C++, uh, that's actually a pretty big deal where if you contribute a change and it doesn't build, you can't even uh, do anything. And then the other thing is, uh, does the code pass tests and work? And so sometimes when you get a code change and, and a human reviews uh, the code change, you can't always tell if the code change uh, passes all the tests and if it builds. And so if you have automated software to help, help with that, uh, you know, that, that helps a lot. And that's what BuildBot is for. And so BuildBot helps with this uh, sort of trend of uh, software development called continuous integration, where you're submitting changes to a project and uh, you can tell right away, it, is this change good or not, and if it's good, you can uh, integrate it into the main uh, code base. And so here's kind of a diagram of what uh, BuildBot is about. So uh, there's a, something called the BuildBot Master, and the BuildBot Master coordinates with BuildBot workers. So typically the BuildBot Master is running on a server somewhere, and BuildBot workers are running on other servers, or it could run on the same host as the BuildBot Master, but generally, people set it up to work on, uh, where the workers are running on different servers. And so you have a, a, some kind of repository 
And typically what people do is they push the change to the repository. And so this is a very old slide. So some of these revision control systems, you may wonder what the heck are some of these, like Bazaar, Darks. Uh, but it doesn't matter. The concept is you push it to Git, and then uh, the master will pull the changes. And then the master has some uh, instructions where if I get a change, these are the commands I should run to build it on this worker. And then when the commands are done, uh, the status can be reported uh, to various notifiers like email, web, IRC, um, you know, things like that. So basically, uh, this is a little bit hard to see, but uh, this is a web interface of BuildBot, and this is showing a, a build where something uh, uh, failed. And so there are many steps that happen, and one of the steps failed, and this step has uh, the actual uh, console output of, of what failed. And so this is handy when you're uh, trying to figure out what's going on and, and what went wrong. Uh, to have the actual results of what went wrong and the actual commands to to trace back and see, but in a nice web interface versus a very long raw log file. And so now I'll talk about BuildBot and Python.org. So I mentioned that the source code for Python is stored in uh, a Git on GitHub. Uh, that's actually uh, relatively new. It used to be in uh, Mercurial. Uh, I think it was on Bitbucket, and I think before Mercurial, it was on Subversion. Um, so the Python project has changed its source code control system over the years. But uh, as developers submit and change, uh, uh, submit changes to Python, uh, the developers, they want to know, does this build and does it pass tests? And so they implemented BuildBot, I, I don't know uh, when. Uh, it was done a long time ago. And uh, uh, it, the build bot detects the changes, and then it builds and uh, builds the code and runs tests. And it builds uh, code on many, many platforms, uh, more than just Linux and Mac and Windows. I mean, it builds platforms like uh, S390, which is the IBM mainframe platform, uh, uh, on AIX, uh, like on variations of Linux that I haven't used in years, like Power... Um, uh, PowerPC CPUs, and why would anyone w want it? Hey, why not? I mean, the more places that run Python and it works, I think that's a, a good thing. And so you can you can click on this uh, uh, build.python.org/all, and uh, you can see kind of what it looks like. And so here's a screenshot uh, which shows uh, on the left these are pull requests. And so you can actually click on these and see what the uh, pull request is. And maybe at the end of the presentation, I'll go through the real uh, UI. And on the top, you'll see all these different platforms like uh, AMD64, Debian, uh, you know, S3, S390 is over here, Gen2 Linux. Over the end here is a, a x86 Tiger, which is Mac, Mac OS. And so there's a lot of platforms. So when people submit changes, to um, Python, uh, you know, there's no way any, I mean, if someone out there has all these machines at home and can test themselves on all these operating systems, that would be amazing. But in reality, like, no, no one does. So this is a huge help because you want Python to move forward, but you don't want to break uh, platforms that you don't have access to. And uh, so who maintains all this? So python.org, there's an ops team and it's made up of volunteers. And the, the, there's a subset of this team called python.buildbots at python.org. And so they maintain the buildbot master, but the buildbot workers are supplied by volunteers around the world who are not part of the ops team. So let's say you have a machine at home connected to the internet, and it's running your own operating system that no one on earth has, but you wanna make sure that Python still works on, on your operating system you can communicate with this ops team and say, hey, I can set up a worker, I can connect to your BuildBot master, and then when you make changes, it will build on my machine in my uh, you know, garage, and you, know, and you won't break my, my platform, and Python will still work on it. And so that's the model of how, how, the, uh, how this has been set up for python.org. And these volunteers, they're very helpful. I really hadn't worked with them much before, but I found them very easy to 
communicate with, and they do other things like they maintain the python.org website, and when each release is done, they make sure that uh, the, the Python binaries can be downloaded. And so they, they do a lot of things behind the scene that we all benefit from as, as users of Python. And so now I'll talk about moving to build bot 9 and Python 3. So uh, python.org, they were using an uh, older version of build bot, uh, version 8. And so that was an older version. The build bot maintainers, they were not updating or fixing this version or doing new releases. And this version only ran on Python 2. And so the, new, the newer version is build bot 9. And it's actively supported, being maintained. It has uh, support for things like Docker and uh, a little bit of Kubernetes. And uh, now it uh, supports Python 3. And I did most of the, the porting work to Python 3. And the other thing is that the UI is in uh, uh, JavaScript and Angular. So even though this is a, a Python project, you can't avoid uh, JavaScript for modern uh, UI front ends. And so, uh, the migration strategy was uh, port the dependencies to Python 3, and that is uh, uh, the largest dependency was uh, a library called Twisted, and that, that library uh, is used for async I.O. and networking in BuildBot. And so Twisted uh, used, implemented async I.O. before uh, async I.O. became part of Python 3. So it's a very old uh, project, but it's, it's very robust. And so after doing that, uh, I ported the build bot code to Python 3. And then when I had that working, then I worked with the ops team to uh, port their config to build bot 3 and migrate buildbot.python.org uh, to the newer version. And so I did another presentation at another uh, Python meetup group called Pininsula on porting Twisted to Python 3. And so I won't discuss that here, but I have the link. And I got a lot of help with that, but I, I did a lot of work. Um, that was a, a large part of, of, of moving this forward. And porting BuildBot to Python 3, I think the next presentation will kind of go through some nitty gritty of how that's done. And I went through the same thing. Uh, you know, print uh, is now a function, CMP is gone, and mostly s string is now Unicode. And I put R before that, after that, because that's where I spent most of my time dealing with Unicode issues, because this code, BuildBot code base is very old. And over the years, uh, they passed strings around, wrote them to disk, read them, passed them over the network, and they didn't really care about Unicode. But now, in Python 3, whenever you're passing things over the network or writing things to disk, you really need to make sure that you're um, you're dealing with bytes and, and not Unicode and doing all that conversion. Uh, that took a lot of time. And uh, so yeah, so then uh, one of the main things that I worked on was making sure that uh, clients, which w the workers which were running on Python 2 could still interoperate with the Python 3 master and vice versa. Uh, that was essential for python.org because they have a lot of workers all around the world and some people said, oh, uh, we're not going to uh, change. And uh, so I found one bug uh, in Python itself. And uh, it took me a while to figure that out. Uh, but I got a lot of help from uh, the uh, uh, Python dev uh, community. So I won't go too in depth into that. But uh, you know, when you're dealing with a large code base, sometimes you run into these uh, kinds of problems. And doing the final migration, I got help from Zachary Ware on the ops team. And there was one minor issue where the web proxy config had to be fixed to allow web sockets to work. Uh, but he diagnosed and fixed that. And uh, so now he flipped the switch in October 2017. And now the uh, build bot is running on uh, uh, Python 3 for python.org. And so I'd like to thank uh, Zachary Ware on the ops team who uh, helped with the final migration, and Pierre Tardy, uh, the BuildBot maintainer, who reviewed and merged my Python 3 patches, and a lot of help from Twisted developers who reviewed and um, uh, incorporated my 
Python 3 patches in, in Twisted. And uh, that's it. That's my presentation. That was excellent. Uh, thanks for the talk, and uh, thanks for all of the contributors that helped make that happen uh, over the past year. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, just a quick question. In the Python 2 code base, did you have actual usages of CMP? And, like, and if so, what was the context? Uh, so the usages were in BuildBot itself. And so the uh, CMP were used to like compare uh, two different uh, classes in BuildBot uh, to determine uh, equality for sorting. And so since that uh, uh, function is gone, uh, you have to implement all the operators like greater than, less than, equals, and then uh, uh, implement uh, so that the operators can work so that sorting can, can occur. So you had to write more code? Uh, a little bit, not too much. Any other questions? One, two, three. All right. Let's give it up for Craig one more time. Thank you so much.